Tonight we are hunting the wily comet Lu Lin in an attempt to see it with our own eyes. We should be able to catch the radiant glow of its cloud of evaporating water, carbon dioxide, and other trace chemicals that make up your typical comet. Lu Lin is just passing on the far side of us from the sun and approaching as close as it can to planet Earth on February 24. We usually take tours of the sky like this in a planetarium, like Humane's Maynard F. Jordan Planetarium, but tonight, with the aid of this little audio tour, you should be able to go out under your own planetarium sky. Step outside your back or front door, and you'll be able to do the same thing there that we do in a planetarium. We will locate just a few stars and constellations and get oriented so that we can see exactly where Lulin is going to be over the next couple of weeks. We know it's going to appear small and cloud-like, just like a puff of smoke, but how easily it can be seen will depend largely on our sky. If you can find a nice dark place where there's a minimum of what we call light pollution, far away from city lights, parking lots, street lights, and even house lights, then the sky will be dark. With the contrast of a good black background sky, the stars, the dim stars, and even little comet Lulin will appear brighter and offer a better chance of seeing faint objects. Take this audio guide, download it to your computer, put it onto your iPod, burn a CD for your Walkman, or perhaps you can even play and record it onto a cassette tape if you're still carrying around a portable cassette Walkman. Share it with your friends and encourage them to get out on those clear nights that are available because there aren't many of them. Then step outside to see if the comet is there. Now let's start to look around this night sky. First we need to get our bearings. The word bearings might suggest we're going to begin looking for bears. And actually that's just what we will do. Look around the sky and not too high in one direction or another. You should be able to spot a fairly distinct, large, simple pattern called the Big Dipper. It's actually the brightest part of the Big Bear, Ursa Major. At this time of the year, it is in the north-northeastern part of the sky, and it is standing on its handle. At 8.30 at night, in mid-February, you should be able to see seven almost equally bright stars. Four of them will be shaped in a rectangle like a cup. It's about a third of the way up the sky. And hanging down from the lower left corner is a handle made of three stars in a curved line. They seem to be hanging down, pointing toward the ground. In essence, these are medium bright stars, but bright enough to see even in some of the not-so-dark skies that you might have in suburbia. Once you've found this pattern, you are facing the general direction of north, but we're going to use the stars of the Big Dipper to locate another very important spot in the sky, the direction north. Go all the way up to the front of the Big Dipper cup, the two stars that form the uppermost side of the cup, and we'll use them to find the North Star. In order to use these pointer stars, as they're called, simply draw an imaginary line. You can use your finger for this. and trace a line from the right star past the left star at the front of the cup, and continue that line to the left, crossing the sky until you encounter another star that's just about as bright as the pointer stars. Once you've found that star, you'll notice there aren't many bright stars in the neighborhood. It is one of the brighter, but not the brightest stars in the sky, and that is Polaris, the North Star. Now we are facing the North Star, the star located almost directly above the North Pole of the Earth. We know that the direction east is on our right, and the direction west is on the left. So turn right, and we are now facing the direction where we can see Lulin. It's going to be fairly low in the sky, but day by day, it will be higher and higher as it moves along its orbit against the background stars. The Big Dipper and the North Star are now on our left. Look a little ways up the sky, and maybe a quarter of the way up the sky, see if you can spot a yellowish bright star. It's the brightest object in that area. I have to confess, I have lied to you because this yellow star is not in fact a star. But the ringed planet Saturn, a neighbor of ours in the solar system, if you have a fairly sensitive color vision, you can detect that it is yellowish as compared to the other stars in the sky, but it does depend on your vision. It's different for different people, and you can judge for yourself whether or not you see any straw or yellow coloring to Saturn. 
it will be more obvious in the darker skies. And it will be the brightest star in this part of the sky, or <laughs> the brightest dot of light in this part of the sky. Once you have found Saturn, you are on the track of the comet, because Lulin on the 23rd and 24th of February, in particular, is very close to the ringed planet. And Saturn becomes a guide for us. But if you now look higher up in the sky, and slightly to the right, you come across another fairly bright star that is much lighter or even blue-white, and the comet will be passing close to that star on the 27th. This really is a star in this case, a star called Regulus. It is considered to be the heart of the stellar lion Leo. Now the most distinct pattern of stars in the lion is a shape resembling a backwards question mark with that bright star Regulus making the dot at the bottom. Start at Regulus, the bright star, and imagine the hook shape of a question mark is above it and tilted to the left a bit. Go up one star, almost directly left to another dim star, then up to another dim star, and up, and then slightly right to another star, quite dim, and now almost straight to the right to the last star, which is the higher tip of the hook. If that were a fish hook, this would be a very sharp barb at the end. This actually does trace out the front of Leo the lion. The first leg of it, from Regulus up to the first star, is considered to be the chest of the lion, and as we trace the curve of the hook shape and around, we're moving around the back of the lion, up past his ear, over the top of his head, and down to his nose. Our comet Lulin is going to be following the line that starts to the lower left of Saturn, though, in the middle of February, and it's going to progress gradually upwards into the right past Saturn, and upwards further for a pass very close by Regulus on the 27th, before reaching that fairly empty part of the sky up ahead of Leo's head. If you use your finger once again to draw a straight line from the lower left of Saturn, past Saturn and Regulus, you'll be following the track of Lulin's orbit against the distant background stars. Looking up and to the right of Regulus, there's that very empty space which is actually the area covered by the constellation Cancer the Crab. Our comet Lulin is following a track along the stars below Leo and is almost identical to the path that the Sun follows over the course of the year. That's because this is a part of the sky that essentially lies along the path of the Earth's orbit. Although the comet coincidentally is passing along the same plane as our orbit, it's still separated by millions of miles from our orbit, and there is no chance that there will be any close encounter or collision, so don't worry. If you're observing the comet in the earliest days in the teens of mid-February, it will be a good idea to delay your bedtime. Go out later at night, when all of the stars will be somewhat higher in the sky. Saturn, Regulus, and Leo will all be higher up if you go out at midnight, and more of the early comet track, the part of the track where the comet will be before the 23rd, will be showing low in the eastern sky. Under the best of circumstances, what you will see is merely a faint, fuzzy puff of smoke in the sky, not very large. It's going to be best to start by scanning the comet's track where you expect it to be with your binoculars, and hopefully run across this little cloud. Once you identify its location with binoculars, it will be easier to direct a telescope if you have such an instrument, or use just your eyes and test their sensitivity to see if it's visible to the naked eye. Should this comet outperform expectations, it may be bright enough to see quite easily. Through binoculars or a small telescope, even you may be able to see that this little cloud is not just a little round dot, but may even be sporting a tail, possibly a tail and anti-tail, but usually only the tail is going to be bright enough to be seen. It'll look like a thin wisp of trailing smoke off one side of Comet Lulin, and the comet itself, although initially round, may appear to be elongated. An elongated coma and the trailing tail are created by the pressure of the sun's light and the solar wind blowing against the very tenuous, rarefied gases that form the coma around the invisible tiny nucleus at the center. Comet Lulin on the 24th is at its closest, as we said before, so it will appear largest and brightest at this time for those of us on Earth. It is actually an exceptional comet not only for the plane of its orbit being similar to the Earth's, but also because it's putting on a good show for us while performing its swan song. 
This comet is following a hyperbolic orbit, which means that it will not be orbiting the Sun and returning in some number of years later on a regular cycle. Lulin's on a trajectory that will take it out of the solar system, never to return. It is going to exceed the speed required to escape the Sun's gravity. So this is a comet that you cannot share with generations to come, except as a story of how you braved an extremely cold night or two in search of a wily comet. So keep warm, best of luck, and happy comet hunting.